What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton from Data Dash, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very important question that I've gotten asked by many people over the last few months, and I think it's one that everyone should ask as we step into what we believe might be the next cycle for Bitcoin. And that is whether or not you should be actively trading in markets, basically entering in and out of Bitcoin, maybe in and out of various altcoin positions, and trading on a daily or short-term time frame versus simply averaging in for the long-term cycle and thinking more of a longer-term time frame in the sense of your investments and trading activity. And I think this is a very important question because we are talking about a very predominant opportunity that doesn't come around a lot, right? So we're going to be talking about all the different precursors to this. I want to let you all know as well, towards the end of the video, we're also going to have a sponsored review of Switchio, which is a decentralized exchange. So very fitting in the sense of what we're talking about, especially with the next cycle coming up as well as talking about altcoins. So anyways, I hope you guys stick around for that. It's going to be a good one. But let's go ahead and dive into this topic. We've talked about this before on the channel, and I've showcased to you all, you know, kind of from time to time about my strategy. But I want to go ahead and try to provide some clarity here because I won't be able to give you the direct answer because this really depends on your risk to reward ratio, your personal belief of where you are at the moment, what works best for you. And then also as well, guys, I can't provide you direct financial advice as always. It's just simply me providing a little bit of an opinion on the market as well as what I can analyze from the given data. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the obvious point to be made here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and state that I believe for the vast majority of people, again, not financial advice in any way, you're going to have to determine for yourself if this applies, the vast majority of people should not actively trade. They should choose the latter and either average in and trade the longer term cycle or invest long term. Now, why do I say this? Well, it is not only true in cryptocurrencies, but it is true across a variety of markets and actually more predominantly in equity and Forex markets that the vast majority of day traders or active traders lose money. Okay. Now, I know that some people believe this is a general myth. And to be fair, uh, for a long time, it was very difficult to find articles that actually go around and getting a kind of detailed structure as to how many people lose in the market. There is no official statistic because we don't have all the data in the world, but it is roughly somewhere between 90 to 95% of active traders who are going to lose money. The few who do win out in the market are either very experienced, very disciplined, and follow a very strict trading strategy or their algorithms. Right? That's pretty much it. <laughs> Those are pretty much the traders who make money in the market. And it's a very difficult statistic to go against. Can you be a part of that 10 or 5% who actually make money? And there's also another number that I always bring up that I never really see people talk about. Even if you can make money as a trader, can you outpace what you would have made simply holding or long-term investing, or doing swing trading of some sort, maybe taking on an approach of a macro trader, which we're actually gonna talk about here on the channel in the next day or so, where I'm gonna be giving you guys a full suite as to how I actually approach markets, but we'll, we'll give a little bit of a brief overview in this video. Now, if you wanna take a look at some of the studies that back up this article, I'll go ahead and leave the article link down below, but these are the sources behind it. Long story short, all right, the vast majority of people are going to lose trading actively. So. You have to ask yourself, are you willing to take that bet? Do you believe you can be the top of the top? Because I'll be honest, most people usually think they can and they try it out and they put all of their money up front and they lose a lot. So if you do want to try that, if you want to be a part of that you know, potential group of traders who do make a profit and might even be able to outpace their simple long-term investments, a good way to start is to either paper trade or trade with a smaller amount of your portfolio to see if you can outpace your long-term portfolio, right? That's a great way to kind of dip your feet in the water in a case, or, or, or I guess can I get your, uh, get your, what, what is the saying? <laughs> get your feet wet, right? Anyways, to get your feet wet um, and start to kind of test within the waters of trading, right? Now, again, I don't want to derail anyone from this topic, but I want to talk about some of the benefits of simply taking on the approach of just averaging in or trading the longer term cycle. The nice thing about it is that Bitcoin is very predictable in the long term. Bitcoin has very parabolic rallies and it has sharp 80% corrections. All right? We just recently had that 80% correction towards the end of 2018. All right? It was a full year 
bear market from the peak here in December of 2017 to the bottom in December of 2018. And we have now started to rally very heavily off of those lows at 3,000 and enter into the next cycle. But we haven't even begun the real bull run. That happens when we reach the all-time highs, as we've seen in the past with Bitcoin, where we can expect that we see exponential action in price and we start to see real speculation and liquidity coming into the market. So as we're here at 10,000, if we have a target range of, say, 50,000, 100,000, that's a 5 or 10x right there. If you do believe that Bitcoin is going to go to that range, whether you originally had a plan to actively trade or to simply invest, this is the real question you have to ask yourself. If that is your plan, you believe that Bitcoin, either way about approaching this market, is going to go to, say, $100,000, right? You have two options. You can try to time the market, trading in and out of Bitcoin, trading in and out of altcoin positions, or you can make a near simple 10x over the next year and a half to two years according again to the assumption that we're going to reach 10,000 by or sorry, excuse me $100,000 on bitcoin's price between some time in 2020 and 2021 do you believe that it's best to try to risk that opportunity trying to beat out the market and possibly receive a higher reward or simply follow averaging in right increasing your position in crypto or predominantly bitcoin and other assets in the space over the next year or so that's the real question you have to ask yourself. And again, I don't have the answer for you guys. I just want to showcase the potential reward and risk as well. Because it's one thing for me to try to oversell you guys on being traders to actively watch the market 24-7. But not only is there a chance to potentially make more money actively trading, there is a lot of potential risk. You can get outpaced by the market and lose your Bitcoin comparative investment if that's your overall goal, trading altcoins, going in and out of Bitcoin to try to hopefully have more Bitcoin or stack sats as it's commonly referred to as. You will involve a lot more time dedication to the market, even if you come with a planned strategy. If you're trading on a short-term basis between the minute chart, the hourly chart, the daily chart, it is going to be much more stressful. Okay, You're going to have to beat your computer a lot more. And above all, guys, when it comes to these kind of opportunities, which we don't get that often, Right. This is a oh, Bitcoin overall as an asset class is our generation's asset. It is millennials and Gen Z. And of course, it's open to anyone. But just like how gold was the um, the kind of innovation in financial markets that went along with the boomer generation, we are starting to see that Bitcoin is serving as that new digital hedge. And I believe confidently, and again, if you believe this is going to go to $100,000, you believe Bitcoin is going to be a trillion dollar asset if not more in the long term. I believe it's going to be a multi-trillion dollar asset. That's my personal belief. But, you know, do you want to risk that opportunity, right? So I have to be fair here, guys. It seems like the cons of trading actively outweigh any potential pros here. And it really puts you into a small basket of hope that you're going to be able to outpace the market. And if you can't make trading a full-time thing, if you can't right your wrongs, if you can't learn from it, use a trade journal, build out a strategy that shows consistent wins over losses, it's probably best to avoid it in the first place. Or, as I mentioned, one thing that I like to do sometimes is I have a small percentage of my portfolio actively trading. If I want to start testing out new strategies, if I believe that there is a predominant opportunity, and I can take some knowledge from that, and if I have any losses, it's not that significant. It usually gets made up for by my long-term investments and the sense of my gains, and then also if I make some profit, hey, that's awesome if I can outpace the market. So again, I know it's very eager for many people to want to try and trade. That's why our channel is where it is today. I give a lot of credit and thanks to you all for those of you who have been watching my trading tip series. So if you do decide you want to try to be that anomaly, if you want to try to be the few that actually went out, I recommend you watch that trading tip series. Go through those episodes, watch them more than once, watch them full and through, get all of the data out of there, and watch other people as well, right? And don't feel like you have to jump full force in if you want to try to be the select few who went out right? Even though the odds are possibly against your favor in the sense of the 90% to 95% statistic, it doesn't mean you can't be one of the champions who wins out in the long term if you're willing to put in the hard work and the dedication. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. I know it wasn't uh, too data intensive, a little more of a rant and rave, but again, just want to give you this kind of precursor here to, to ask these kind of questions. One other thing as well that many people ask about is, you know, considering the altcoin cycles. And I guess a good chart for this would really be taking a look at Bitcoin dominance. I would say that you can, again, can trade these cycles um, 
you know, really determines in there your risk to reward ratio, how much you want time you want to put in. But the major things that we look for is that there's really been two altcoin cycles in the past, and they come at very clear periods of time. When Bitcoin revisits its highs, so in this case, it would be when Bitcoin revisits 20,000, when we expect the first altcoin cycle. And then the second one that we're expecting as well is when Bitcoin reaches its peak for the overall cycle, probably sometime in 2021, and where we reach a new all-time high, maybe around 80 or 100,000, right? That's at least what I'm expecting at the moment. So if you want to try to trade those cycles, maybe take on some extra altcoin exposure during those time periods you're welcome to. But even though that's what history has done, it doesn't mean that it's going to fulfill itself this time around. Anyways, that being said, everyone, let's go ahead and dive into our sponsored review and interview of Switchio Network. Alrighty, everyone. So let's go ahead and spend some time to take a look at today's sponsor, and it is no other than Switchio Network. Now, many of you may recall, especially those of you who are long-term viewers of the Data Dash channel, that I was very early to covering the Neo ecosystem, even back during the day when it was still known as AntShares. And you may also recall that Switchio Network is one of the first projects in the crypto space to try to provide decentralized exchange services to the Neo ecosystem. But they really didn't stop at that. See, many decentralized exchanges have been letdowns to me over the last year or so. They usually lack user experience that feels fluent for everyday traders and investors. Many of them pigeonhole themselves into one specific blockchain, and many at the end of the day just don't provide a better experience than what's expected from traditional centralized exchanges. But Switchio breaks down all of these barriers. It provides one of the best experiences that I've seen out of any decentralized exchange, covers a wide range of different protocols and different tokens, and also provides a clean user experience and the entire process. So we're not only gonna be taking a look through the actual exchange itself as we go throughout the review, but at the end of the video, we're going to be doing an interview with Ivan Poon, who's the founder and the current lead of the project and team out of Singapore that's leading Switchio to becoming the decentralized exchange that it is. So let's go ahead, let's stop talking and dive right into some of the substance here of what Switchio is all about. So a few key things to take into mind here. One of the biggest points here about Switchio Network is that it's not focused on one specific protocol. It covers a wide range of some of the major protocols in the crypto space, from well-known protocols like Ethereum to some of its other key players like NEO and also other protocols like EOS. So the thing to take into mind here when you're using Switchio is that you're probably getting the widest range of altcoins that you could get out of any centralized or decentralized exchange, which is a really unique selling point here when it comes to Switchio Network. Again, all all coming in one single framework for you to trade out of. And outside of this as well, Switchio has a lot of key selling points. They're really priding themselves in the sense of security, and we'll talk about this in the sense of its account creation system. And again, we're not trusting Switchio here in the sense of its third-party trust, right? We're not tr uh, you know, giving our keys away to Switchio. You are in charge of your keys 24-7 when you're using and interacting with Switchio. They're just providing an interface in this case to be able to do decentralized trading. And outside of this as well, you have innovation all throughout the platform from its clean user experience to, again, the security behind it, allowing you to be a custodian of your funds, which, again, I think is a very key principle when utilizing cryptocurrencies, when you have that opportunity to be the custodian of your funds until that time when you finally want to make the exchange. And along with that as well, they've got a great team as well that takes any community feedback or questions. So don't hesitate to reach out to them. So let's go ahead and dive into the Switchio exchange. And the first thing you're probably going to notice is just how clean the user experience is and how familiar it feels to what you're used to in a traditional centralized exchange. Again, it's something that a lot of decentralized exchanges don't do properly, but Switchio does in a perfect fashion. It not only has trading view API here, so we have a very nice clean chart with our different time frames, but it provides trade history, an order book, as well as the ability to place different types of orders, like limited market orders. So again, very familiar, very functionable, and what we would expect from a professional decentralized exchange. But again, to reemphasize, you get a wide range of different cryptocurrencies here that you can trade from right out of the bat here. You have NEO, which again was their first protocol they focused on, but also additional protocols like EOS and Ethereum. And because they cover Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens, this also opens up other markets, such as wrapped Bitcoin markets, where we can trade and speculate against Bitcoin's price. And we can also trade a variety of stablecoin pairs from the Ethereum network to the NEO network. So we're getting a wide range of coverage here in the sense of the altcoins that we can trade. Let's go ahead and actually connect a wallet so we can see what it's like to actually onboard to the exchange. Well, the nice thing about it is that you're not forced to register an account. 
You're not forced to toss up your keys and your trust into a centralized entity like Switchio. In fact, they've built a framework where we can still be the custodian of our own funds, whether or not we want to simply plug in a wallet that we might have already, or if we want to register something that feels familiar, an account on Switchio. Now, many might say that, you know, when you're registering an account, are they going to be the custodian? Don't, they, you, don't you have to go through a variety of barbaric processes that you're used to in the sense of registering for a traditional exchange account? No, you actually don't. In fact, they have a whole article here explaining how you actually go about registering an account. And it's very familiar, but simple. All you simply have to do is register with an email and password. And you can also use additional two-factor authentication for security. I highly recommend that. And the team recommends it as well. But what's really interesting is that if you, for some reason, cannot reclaim your account in this case, if you can't log in, if you forgot your password in some way and you can't log into your email, the really cool thing about Switchio is that it gives you a backup phrase. But this isn't like most networks or most decentralized exchanges where if you created a wallet of some sort, you're going to have to create one for every single protocol. No, they create a mnemonic phase or phrase here that's going to allow you to have one simple seed phrase or backup phrase that covers all three protocols. So that's really fascinating stuff, guys. You only have to remember one seed in this case. I've never seen a decentralized exchange do this. Then again, I think it's unique in the sense because Switchio covers such a wide range of different tokens on different protocols. So I have to give them big props for this. Really, again, speaks to the fact that Switchio provides a cleaner and simpler user interface. And I think this is necessary for a decentralized exchange to actually go mainstream or be utilized by a lot of people. But for me personally, I'm going to go ahead here and connect with one of my existing wallets. And as I can detect here, I've already got MetaMask as one of my Chrome extensions I'm using on the Brave browser. But if I just simply could connect, just like that, as I've already given permission, bam, I've already got my current holdings here. From a little bit of Ethereum that I've got here, as well as some USD coin. This is a general web extension or uh, that you can use, MetaMask. It's one of many wallets that you can use. And I use it personally to interact with decentralized exchanges to test them out and also use it for DeFi products. Now, we can take a look here on Switchio and see that it gives us a very clean dashboard and almost a count overview that's expected with most exchanges. You can see a full list of all of your holdings, an instant in a connection to depositing, withdrawing, or trading against certain different types of pairs on the open market. We can see our previous trades here, again, all of which are settled real time on chain between the different protocols. You can also get rebates as well for trading as a market um, market maker in this case, basically providing liquidity on the market. In this case, if you do maker rather than taker transactions, where again, you're basically just asking for a market order. And then outside of that as well, you have fiat gateways. So if you wanted to buy more Ethereum or buy some of the big cryptos to trade directly here on Switchio, well, you can do that with a debit card powered by O3, which is a really interesting project based out of Japan. And again, we can add other wallets here. Again, if you're going to be going through the manual process of integrating your wallets rather than registering a Switchio account, this is how you do it. And they cover a wide range of things from hardware to software wallets. So it provides ultimate flexibility for those of you out there. And again, you can really make the experience your own and start trading. Once you've got your wallet integrated, again, it's simply just making a confirmation on the trades. You simply have to sign the transaction in the sense of MetaMask or on your ledger. And it's really cool. Everything is settled on chain. There's finality on it. You don't have to trust that an exchange is saying, oh, you know, you actually own these funds. No, you can confirm it on chain. And I think this is the real big beauty here in the sense of being able to be your own custodian and being able to use a functionable, clean, decentralized exchange like Switchio Network. So we've taken a good overview here, guys. Again, you've got all the functionality you need. You've got a clean user experience. And Switchio, I have to say, has really shaken up the game by providing a wide range of tokens and really provides, again, an opportunity for you to become your own bank in a sense and the sense of being able to trade and being really your own boss at the end of the day. I think it's really cool. Now, I want to go ahead. We're going to dive into this interview with Ivan. It's a very relevant interview for those of you, again, who might want to learn a little bit more about Switchio. Again, they've got some other interesting things as well, such as their OTC feature that they launched recently, where you can do, again, decentralized trading here. You can access that right here. So you take a look at the pairs here, make direct swaps between different tokens and offer it at a specific price range. So again, if you guys want to check out any resources, check them out down below in the description. But let's go ahead and dive into this awesome interview that we did with Ivan Poon. 
Alrighty, everyone. So let's go ahead and spend some time to sit down with an individual I've been meaning to talk to for some time, as it's a project I've been keeping up with in the decentralized exchange space, and that is Ivan Poon, who is the CEO and founder of Switchio Network. Ivan, thank you for making the time, man. I know we're on completely different time zones as you're based down in Singapore, but it's a pleasure to be talking with you. Yeah, hi, Nick. It's great to be on the show. Uh, thanks for making the time as well. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. So I've got a lot of things I want to ask you about. I want to dive into Switchio. I think you would agree with me that we're seeing a really big expansion on decentralized exchanges as a whole. It's becoming much more practical and I think beneficial to the cryptocurrency space for self-custody and talking about the importance of things like that later on. But I want to start off kind of simple and ask you, you know, where did you get involved in cryptocurrencies and what's a little bit about your background and what led you to creating Switchio Network? Right. Well, we... Um... The co-founders, most of us were, have actually um, a developer kind of background. So we actually came into cryptocurrency around the time Ethereum did ICO. So it was really interesting uh, to us. The pitch was a, the world computer. I don't know if, if that's still the current pitch, but um, it, it was something that really uh, caught our eye. We didn't participate in the ICO, of course, because um, we didn't really understand what, what the, the whole space at that time. But, but shortly after we got involved in, in the whole space, uh, like many people, um, our first steps were basically uh, investing or trading cryptocurrencies, altcoins, etc. And uh, that also kind of aligns uh, into why we actually build a decentralized exchange of, of all things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's interesting how much, you know, we've seen an evolution of all these new models in the crypto space and how foreign they might have seen at first, especially the ICO. Right. Um, but I'm real curious to ask you, Ivan, you know, you know, I'm real curious to get to the core question here, I think, for decentralized exchanges. A lot of people uh, try to ask a very practical question. Why do we need decentralized exchanges? And I think it comes down to a very important question of what decentralized exchanges fix. Why is it so important to remove these centralized actors from facilitating trades in this case and have it where we can actually have custody of our own funds? Yeah, well, um, so I think to not have any centralized actors in trading or basically any sort of transfer of cryptocurrencies is basically the premise of the whole the whole movement the whole the whole industry or, or the whole ecosystem so um when you trade say um ethereum for um, any altcoin or even ethereum for say bitcoin um ideally all these sort of uh, trades are actually uh, what you will call um tran transfer of value so it doesn't really make sense to have all these cryptocurrencies if you actually don't, uh, or there's no good way to be able to um, do this peer to peer. Um, yeah, so so I think the decentralized exchanges are really uh, core and fundamental to the to the whole ecosystem and the whole um, cryptocurrency uh, movement. Yeah, I think it does fit in the the kind of philosophy of it. Not to mention, what's so nice about it, Ivan, is that you know when you're actually making these transactions on chain and through these decentralized exchanges, you know that you have the finality of those blockchains. So if you've received Ethereum in your address, you know that that has been confirmed by a miner. It's been transacted over the network. And the same goes in this case for whatever validation or consensus mechanism Neo uses or EOS. And I want to dive a little bit into that. You know, talking about you know what Switchio is like and then also understanding how it stands out compared to a lot of DEXs on the market because you guys have grown up a lot since I first kept up with you uh, back, God, it's been over a year now, I think, and you guys have done a lot in the sense of covering a wide range of altcoins. So I'd love you to just spend some time to talk about what kind of makes Switchio stand out. Um, yeah, so I, I think decentralized exchanges are getting much better than, than previously. So and, and one of the things that we've been focusing on is um, really usability, right? Um, in a decentralized exchange, there's there's no um, login sort of system which um, the, the the mass market is familiar with. I think that's why uh, at, at the start of the uptick it's um, not so good. But uh, I think at Switcher, what what we do it's really to um, try to improve this aspect, and we, I think we are one of the most usable or the most user friendly sort mm -hmm. of uh, DEXs out there. Um, we do have uh, we provide options for basically any sort of wallet login and on top of that we have a a, uh, a self-custody solution similar to how our password manager works but then all the user needs to do to um all the user needs is his email and password he doesn't need to um, like deal with uh, cryptocurrency wallets etc um yeah so so that's how we we try to uh, bridge the space um, between decentralized exchanges and and basically the, the mass market 
Awesome. So you guys basically utilize the benefit of being a self custodian to make the entry process very simple, email and password, basically be able to save all that information for your logins. It's really interesting. You know, in the sense of the kind of range of coins that you guys cover, what kind of coins do you cover? I know you guys, uh, you know, uh, from my understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong, you guys cover NEO, uh, so that's Net5 tokens. You also cover EOS, uh, and then also Ethereum. So you're pretty much covering the whole basket of ERC20 tokens in there. Am I correct? Yeah, so I guess that's another thing that makes us pretty unique. We're probably one of the only DEXs that, that have so many blockchains. And, and we, we managed to do it in a, in a non-custodian fashion as well. Uh, so, so the current technology we use, it's uh, basically atomic swaps. It's not something really new, but it's, uh, it's not something that has been uh, executed in a um, very user-friendly way and, and to, and to now. Mm -hmm. um, so so we, we basically use an automate, automated market maker, similar to Uniswap, uh, to basically match trades against uh, other users. And this is conducted through a uh, hash uh, HTLC, basically a special contract or special function, which uh, allows a both sort, both contracts to know when uh, certain funds should be transferred or should be released. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I know Uniswap and I think many other exchanges and stuff or decentralized exchanges have really started to, again, uh, kind of show the different ranges of approaches you can take and to showcase that this can be done on a lot of different networks. Um, but at the same time, I think you guys have one of the best user interfaces. You have the widest range of altcoins that I've seen on the market covering the range of protocols that you have. The thing, though, that really stands out to me, Ivan, is just how long you guys have been in the game. And I, I really am curious to get your opinion on something. You know, I, I was talking with some of the team as well, and, and I really am curious to get an opinion from yourself on this. I think we've been in a very kind of rough altcoin market at the moment, and a lot of people have been curious about, you know, where they see, where you see altcoins and many other people see altcoins going over the next year. So as someone who's kind of been working in the decentralized exchange space, I'd love to get your opinion on where you think the altcoin market is going, because I do see that there is actually a lot of potential in some key projects out there outside of Bitcoin. Um, yeah, so regarding altcoins, I think the um, so the market is it's, it's very bearish now. And um, yeah, I can't really speculate which way it will go. But at the same time, it, I think a lot of people are acknowledging that uh, a lot of tokens that don't have real utility or don't really have a good reason to exist are, are basically um, not doing very well. Um, and, and this, of course, as, um, as people realize that um, yeah, not, not, every single, yeah, not every single token is um, valuable just because uh, of certain uh, marketing uh, taglines or whatever. Mm. So um, basically what, what people are trying to look for now is intrinsic value. And, and of course, that is um, a lot harder to find. So uh, for, for Switcher itself, we're actually looking at uh, not, not so much altcoins, but we're looking to list uh, deriv derivatives, um, oh. margin tokens, short tokens, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, this is, and this is made possible through a lot of upcoming DeFi projects that basically are able to make synthetic um, tokens that are ERC20 compatible. Um, yeah, so, so this is something we're looking at and, and we're actually upgrading our contract, our Ethereum contract very soon. And uh, we'll be able to integrate with uh, decentralized liquidity providers like Kyber and Kyber Network and Uniswap. And this will basically give us a, a much better um, order book or liquidity on our exchange and also um, provide all this uh, margin trading or, or basically this sort of derivative um, trading options for our users. I'm really happy you brought up DeFi, Ivan, because for me personally, I um, and DeFi has been one of the biggest focus points for me right now. And the ability to, for example, trade these different types of financial assets in different ways. I know you're probably aware of like wrapped Bitcoin, for example. Now you can trade that on the Ethereum network and speculate on Bitcoin's price with a much more scalable network, access to these decentralized exchanges. And as you mentioned, network pools like Kyber. I mean, and Kyber is another Singapore-based project like you guys, and they've done a lot of amazing stuff. They were really one of the first in the game here in the sense of bringing liquidity to DEXs. So... I'm absolutely excited to hear that you guys are working alongside them. You guys are looking to see how you guys can expand Switchio Network and build a better experience, build out new financial products to trade on Switchio. I'm real curious, you know, Ivan, I think, uh, you know, we've obviously done a review of the platform. 
before this interview. And it's been great getting to chat with you. But I'm curious, where can people go to get a, a little bit more information about what you guys do at Switch? And maybe give it a test run, in this case, connecting one of their wallets. Um, so to connect, basically, all, all you need to go is to do is to go to switch.exchange. And um, basically, if you have like an Ethereum Web3 wallet, it's really easy to just um, try it without exposing any funds at all. Awesome. OK, well, we'll leave that down below in the description so people can give it a try. Again, I mean, I got to say, I know you guys have been in the game for a long time when it comes to decentralized exchanges. It's awesome to finally get to chat with you. And uh, I got to say, I'm really proud of how far you guys have come as a company. So we'll, be have to, we'll have to have you back on the channel. We'll have to keep up with what's going on with Switchio. And uh, I hope you I wish you all the best of luck when it comes to expanding, because I think you and I both agree self-custody is key. Finality is key when we do exchanges and transactions. And the only way you're going to get that is if we're doing it peer to peer over decentralized exchanges like Switch. Yeah. So, Ivan, thank you very much for making the time, man. I appreciate it as always. Yep. Thanks, Nick, for having me.